Okay, so you would probably by now you start getting aware of what's virtualization, but you're asking why virtualization and why all the fuzz about virtualization, why a lot of companies today are jumping on the board of virtualization. Actually, about like more than uh, like more than sixty percent of all the workloads today in the uh, more more than sixty percent of the workload today is virtualized. So as you can see, there is a huge amount of workload that's being virtualized. So it's like actually there is more virtual machines in the world today than there is physical boxes. So let's see why companies are moving to that direction and why more virtual machine exists today than there is physical machines out there. All right, so the first reason that the hardware of the servers have grown so fast that they actually could provide a lot of resources that usually are not utilized by a single application. So I have actually run Capacity Planner in the past for so many customers and when I do uh, a server utilization profile show back to them, to the customer, uh, most of the time you will notice about 90% of their physical servers are running with, between 0 and 10% CPU utilization. So that's mean they're paying for a lot of compute power that they're not utilizing. So in, the, in, the, in this particular arena here, where it's actually 0 to 10% utilized, that's mean 90% of that physical server you bought is wasted. So if you bought that server for $10,000, you're already wasting $9,000 of that server if you weren't virtualizing. So you were you will be paying for unused computing power if you were using the traditional model. Uh, and by the way, uh, if, uh, if one, one important thing or one kind of nice uh, phrase, x86 is the most underutilized platform in the market today. Uh, the reason behind that, most of the Unix and most most of the Unix and main frames have virtualization since long ago. So actually, x86 was the uh, the last to catch in the virtualization game. So if you look at the mainframe, they had a since like they had virtualization since probably 1960 or even probably before that. Uh, same thing, many of the uh, Unix platforms have it. For example, the Power Series from IBM, uh, they had they had it for probably 20 or 30 years. So actually, coming from an IBM uh, background before joining VMware, I used to sit in the I used, I used to sit in the in the office. Uh, Next to the guys who's actually um, who's actually working with mainframes and power series, and I was telling them about virtualization and how new how how it was a new technology for the x86 platform. They kind of were giggling about it because they had it for quite a while before that. So it's totally proving technology, uh, proving meth mythology, and now as well for the x86, it's been for over 10 years in the market. So. It's totally proven, and it's actually you want to better utilize your hardware. And with the evolution of your CPUs per day, so it's like it seems like so with that with that amount of CPU power increase, you probably your your under your under utilization will grow dramatically by. Uh, year over year, if you don't virtualize, so that's one thing. So you don't want to waste that resource, all that resources. You don't want to waste all that money for nothing. Uh, again, so the main benefit of uh, virtualization have been in the uh, today is, or the main drive of virtualization was cost cutting. So most companies wanted to save money. They want to make sure to reduce their Data center footprint as much as possible. Nobody want to overspend on IT if they don't have to. So virtualization came actually to be the savior, especially like when the market have crashed and after that a lot of companies trying to cut cost. They trying to achieve more with their IT budget, and virtualization has dramatically helped with that in different ways. 
Uh, so as as I mentioned, you had a lot of underutilized server earlier. Now you could better utilize them. Uh, in the example here, so if if, you, if for if before virtualization you need the 110 physical servers, after virtualization you might end up with 10 servers, uh, replacing this 110 servers, or you, you might even uh, need below that, depending on how much resources each of your server is needed or now when they're going to be converted they're going to be virtual machines how much resources each of your virtual machine going to require so having to buy less servers that's on its own is a lot of cost reduction uh, that's cost reduction going to come in multiple forms it's going to come by reducing the hardware cost so you're actually buying less hardware that will cost less money uh, you, you have to buy less racks you have to. You get to use less power, so you could uh, you, you could dramatically reduce your energy bill. So 110 servers, comparing to 10 servers, that's a lot of power difference. You get to reduce your data center size, so you don't have to pay for your for an oversized data center, uh, because rather than having to host 110 servers in this example, you're only gonna host need one chassis of 10 servers. So all that money add up to a big chunk. I mean, if you're gonna actually go and figure out all the money required to buy 110 servers, uh, maybe 10 chassis, uh, buy four or five racks, all the energy and power that's used for that, all the the cooling you require to cool 110 servers, all the space you require for that, in comparison with when you only require 10 servers, that's come to a massive money. And for a lot of companies. It's real, like that huge saving was the main reason behind the push for virtualization. So if you can cut your your company budget by ten uh, by ten folds, it's a big reason why they want to virtualize. So this is just sharing like the example we were talking about, where you're gonna have the ten servers. Uh, doing the work of 110 servers. All right. So while actually uh, cost saving was the big driver behind virtualization, it wasn't the only driver behind it. Uh, especially like with v uh, and with VMware virtualization or uh, v which we call VMware vSphere, and we're gonna explain much more on it later on. Uh, with the encapsulation of virtual machines. And now the ability to move virtual machine in a much easier manner, we can actually build a lot of availability features and disaster recovery features for applications at a fraction of complexity and cost of existing solutions. So today, when you try actually to do, for example, let's look at availability. So today, when actually you're trying to do an availability of an application using traditional methods you have to actually go and create a cluster uh, for example if you actually wanted to create an availability for a Microsoft Exchange server or an SQL server the first thing you would go and do you create Microsoft cluster for it so Microsoft cluster uh, beside the cost disadvantage because you have to go and buy an extra server dedicated for the availability of it so now you have two server one is a primary and active and running the second one is just idle there waiting for the first one to fail and you might use it once twice a year when the primary fail so you're wasting all that resources for the second server being idle so beside that cost factor the complexity of maintaining such availability is usually huge and a lot of admins would like to avoid it if possible so with virtualization, with that VM being encapsulated, and now we can protect it with the different features like VMware HA without even having to buy a dedicated hardware for it. We can actually run different VMs on the hardware that's gonna it's gonna fail for to uh, it's gonna fail over to. Okay, so here I'm not gonna go too deep in the availability features available in the vSphere. We're gonna talk about them in more much more details in later on uh, uh, lessons. As well, the disaster recovery of virtual machine, as they don't have to run in the same hardware, and as well, the virtual the operating system in it is not aware of the physical hardware 
that it's running on. It's only aware of the virtual hardware presented to it, which is a stand right virtual hardware. Having a, creating a disaster recovery for it is much easier. So now I don't have to match the hardware that I have in the production in my, in my disaster recovery. Uh, it could be actually much lower specs as well in disaster recovery means saving me a lot of cost. As well, testing my disaster recovery is much easier. So all this uh, flexibility from availability and disaster recovery have actually even pushed toward virtualization even farther. Uh, another thing that's available today, as you can see, there is we, in VMware we have offered a lot of advanced features like vMotion, no, no, uh, no shared storage vMotion, storage vMotion, VMware HA, VMware DRS, VMware storage DRS, and VMware DVM. So all these advanced features give a lot of flexibility and a lot of extra business continuity and availability. Uh, we, I'm not going to explain these features at the moment. I would rather explain them one by one so we'll have a full lesson on these features. Uh, a lot of these features when they were first introduced to the market, a lot of people uh, like looked at them as magic to the amount of flexibility and availability they were, they were giving that were never possible before virtualization. Okay, so, summary. So what I really wanted you to get from uh, this particular lesson. I wanted you to know what's the concept of virtualization. So again, virtualization as I mentioned earlier is just the ability to run multiple operating system instances concurrently, simultaneously at a single machine. So you have them all running at the same time. Uh, hyper hypervisor. So hypervisor is actually a piece of a computer software firmware or hardware that creates and runs virtual machines. So in a more simplified term is the software hypervisor is the software that makes virtualization possible. So it's the software that you install in the physical box to allow you to create multiple virtual machines, uh, which is in, in each machine you can install. Uh, and it's, install the desired OS and desired application as required. Uh, then after that we discussed the benefits of virtualization. So as I highlight here in red, cost saving or cost cutting was the main driver behind virtualization, though it wasn't the only driver behind it. So availability, flexibility, and the easiness of disaster recovery for recovery for a virtualized workload was other factors at driving virtualization. So we talked about how we achieved cost cutting in here uh, by reducing the foot, uh, footprints, uh, reducing the required cooling, the required power, and the required hardware to run your environment. Uh, about the availability, flexibility, and disaster recovery features that virtualization made possible, especially the VMware offering, we're going to discuss these in an upcoming lesson.